My name is Elise Wild, and you are listening to Women's Lifestyle Magazine, Inspired Voices. All right, Russ, thank you for joining me today. Um, first off, tell me how you came to be the CEO of the Amway Riverbank Run. Well, I had worked with Fifth Third for many years, um, sort of just on the side um, and helping them look at the P&L for the race and um, see what they can do to help it, you know, control expenses because obviously, um, you know, having one organization trying to fund a, an event as big as this, um, it, you know, it gets to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and they just, they approached me about uh, potentially taking over the race itself. Um, and so I thought long and hard about it. And um, I met with the folks at Amway and we had a good conversation about them coming in and taking over the title sponsorship. And we eventually came to an agreement. And so I took over ownership of the race. And then we, um, you know, had Amway take over the title sponsorship, and then the presenting sponsorship is brought to you by Fifth Third Bank with Spectrum Health, our official health partner. So it just sort of it came together with um, three large organizations that wanted to see 40 years of heritage continue in West Michigan, mm -hmm. and we were able to accomplish that. So do you have a history um, as a runner? Is, did you participate in the race uh, prior to, to becoming involved with it? I was more of an event person. Um, I've done events throughout my entire career. Um, you know, I've dabbled in running. Uh, I've got <laughs> I've got a bad knee, so it makes it sort of difficult. Um, yeah, yeah. And I keep I know I need to get it fixed. Um, but um, you know, running is a great way for people to take out stress, um, especially in today's time. You know, you, if you look in the neighborhoods, I'm sure where you live too, you see lots of people that are out walking and running, and yeah. we see this. Uh, a great opportunity for people to use this time to, um, you know, I, everybody says social distancing. I like to say physical distancing right now because we all still want to be social, um, but to physical distance um, away from one another, but still have the opportunity to get outside, um, get some fresh air, and get some exercise in. So life has changed for every single one of us in the midst of this pandemic, and we are seeing a lot of announcements roll out of some of our city's premier events that we look forward to all year long being canceled or rescheduled. And the Riverbank Run is one of those events. We look forward to it every year and it's kind of a, um, a harbinger of summer, or that's how I think of it um, anyways. It's, it's a sign that uh, summer's coming. And um, even if you don't necessarily participate in the race, like you know Riverbank Run Day. It's something that just, it's a feeling that comes across the city. Um, and it's a really special event. Tell me about rescheduling it and how it felt to make that decision. That must have been a really hard call to make. Well, at least it was. Um, you know, and I thought about it this morning before our call. Um, it was 10, 10 days ago today that we announced that we were going to be postponing the race. And I thought about the week leading up to that. Um, you know, that Friday before, it was the 13th, you know, we had still planned on moving ahead. You know, you know, based upon the information that we had been able to attain, uh, we felt that we still had a chance to be able to have the event. And at the same time, I started looking at dates just to see what might be out there. I shouldn't say I, I said our team did. Um, and as we explored possible opportunities, we kept thinking, oh, we can go ahead and we can go ahead. And by the time we got to Monday afternoon, we realized that we were going to have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And the original thought was that we would just turn the race into a virtual race, which so many other races have done. Um, you look at, you know, marathons and races throughout the entire country. Um, you know, even the Boston Marathon, the, the nation's second oldest race, held through two world wars and the 1980 Spanish flu uh, pandemic, um, was forced to postpone for the first time in 124 years. Wow. So, I mean, we just haven't seen these kinds of things happen before. So we yeah. thought that we would still be okay. but like I said, you know, we realized on that Monday that we really, really needed to start focusing on what we were going to do. So, um, you know, virtual race and just cancel it um, because the logistics behind it, that kind of thing. You know, we have to work with the USA Track and Field Association because we're the 25 kilometer national championship. Uh, we have to uh, work with the city because obviously we take up a lot of space in downtown Grand Rapids on the day of the race. Um, and so we have to look and see when Calder's gonna be available, when we can close streets in downtown Grand Rapids, when it's not gonna interfere with other things that already are scheduled, such as Art Prize. Um, it, was, it was a big, uh, 
big challenge. And fortunately, we were able to identify um, Saturday, October 24th as the date that we could, that sort of everything aligned. It, it aligned with USA Track and Field, it aligned with the city. Um, and although it's very close to the Grand Rapids Marathon, uh, there's just the week prior to ours, we still felt we could go ahead and, and make it work. And, you know, fortunately, the folks at the Grand Rapids Marathon have been very receptive to us and our date. Um, and we're all going to collaborate together to make, uh, you know, uh, two big running events happen in downtown Grand Rapids, you know, really close to each other. That, that's exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are really relieved that instead of canceling altogether, you guys um, rescheduled. And um, one of the things I love about the Riverbank as someone who just does the 5Ks, not a, not a, not a long distance runner, um, but you guys offer training sessions it feels like almost all year long and um, you guys are constantly sending emails out and you guys are really in the community. Um, and that really gives people a sense of, of the community of, of running and it really helps set people up for success come race day. I mean, it, even someone who has never run before could kind of get in the Riverbank Run pipeline and have a, a su successful race day where they meet their goals. Um, and I, that's something that I think is, is really special about you guys. Um, when do you anticipate being able to, to implement uh, those training events again and, and kind of bring those components back? Well, at least that's an interesting question. It's sort of ironic. You know, we were scheduled for the Riverbank Run to be on uh, Saturday, May 9th this year. Um, when we look at our new date and we go back to our original training schedule, um, the 25K training, if you were a brand new runner, would, will start on May 10th <laughs> so for, the, for the October 24th date. So, I mean, we're, we're going to be going right back after it. Now, obviously, you know, with uh, social distancing or physical distancing, um, we're challenged with that right now. All of our events are canceled through May right now. Um, we hope to be able to bring the training events back sometime we're, we're thinking August right now, um, so that we'll start doing training runs again at the YMCA downtown in Grand Rapids. We'll do the parent training runs as soon as we possibly can because they do those on a regular basis, the second Tuesday of every month. Um, so, you know, it's sort of an unknown at this point in time, but once we have that opportunity, we're looking forward to getting back out there and offering these free events um, to anybody. I mean, even if you're not participating in the Riverbank run, uh, we still want you to come out. And we want you to be part of the community. Um, and we try to make it as fun as possible. You know, our, our, our partners at Fifth Third and Spectrum Health are amazing because, because they help us underwrite some of these types of things. Um, you know, we've got Meyer and Soaring Eagle and our, our race committee and our road warriors. There's all these people that have come together that are allowing us to be able to do these types of things um, and, you know, pursue our date of October 24th. So tell me about what registered runners need to know about the date change. Um, you mentioned uh, a virtual race and um, tell me a little bit more about that and tell me what, um, what people need to do, if anything, to, to, um, for the, the date change. Well, the good news is that, that if you've registered for the race right now, your, your registration has automatically moved over um, to October 24th. You don't need to do anything at all. Um, so that's the easy part. Um, you know, the race is 208 days away from today right now. Um, so, you know, you've got time, if you still want to register, you can do so. Um, if that date doesn't work for you, you can participate in the virtual race, which means you get all your cool race swag. Um, you still get your medal, you still get your t-shirt, um, all those things will mail them to you. You submit your time and we send you everything back. Oh, that's cool. So, okay. Yeah, there's races that do that all over the country. So, like, you know, you, you, know, you might live in Spokane, Washington and want to run the Amway Riverbank run because it's a national championship, and you can do so. So, um, and that obviously applies to everybody locally. If, you're not, if you don't feel comfortable um, in running in a large group, that's fine. You can do the virtual race. Um, if those two options don't work for you, you can defer your race registration to next year. Um, and then we'll, there's a small fee for that, but um, it's minimal. You know, we do have the, the, the costs that are associated with the medals that are already made, they're mm -hmm. already here, um, the t-shirts that are already done, all those types of things, because, you know, we're, you know, at this point in time, would have only been, 
what, 39 days out from the race. Um, so, you know, a lot of the things that um, we start planning on, you know, happen in last fall. You know, the, every, you know the, the medals are all ordered then and that kind of thing. So it, it takes a lot of effort and time um, leading up to the race before we can even, have, you know, have the opportunity to produce it. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have uh, Laura Lee, uh, Matthew, and Sarah Laurent who work on the race full-time year-round, um, you know, specifically working on those types of things and training schedules and, you know, yeah, everything that goes along with the race, the, 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 the sports and fitness expo. All those things take time to organize, you know, booking hotel rooms for elite athletes. Um, uh, there's so many different things that come into play. So one of the um, positive things that's coming out of this pandemic right now is that the community is really coming together to support um, the businesses, the organizations, um, even individuals who um, might be taking a financial hit from what's happening right now. Um, tell me how people can support the Amway Riverbank Run during this time. Well, you know, we're just asking people to be patient and stay with us until October 24th and participate in the race. Um, that's the big thing for us is that um, we just want, we had so many people that were asking us, you know, are, are you going to have to cancel? Are you going to have to cancel? And we decided to dig our heels in and, and make it so that the race could continue. So now we're just asking for people to show up that day. We want you to be there. We want you to be part of the event. We want you to tell your friends. I mean, I, we would love it if this was one of the biggest um, years we've ever had. And I think it could be um, oh, in regards to attendance. People think, are, there's, go ahead. Oh, I, I think it could be too. I mean, that would just be so, such a um, celebration of what we've all gone through, you know, ho hopefully it being all over by then to have such a huge, a, a historic turnout for the race. That would be incredible. Yeah, that's that's really what we're hoping for at this point in time. And I think we've got a pretty good opportunity to see that happen. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we do the finish fest afterwards and, you know, everybody gets together and celebrates. Um, and it's a great opportunity for people to get together. And even if you're not a runner, to come down and see the accomplishment of people that have ran their first 25K or set their personal record for a distance, even for the 5Ks. I mean, it, it, you can come down and do the 5K community walk. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, you know, the Power 5K run, there's the Fox Honda 10K, and then there's the fifth or 25K that you can do all the, you know, there's all these different choices for people. So to come down and be part of the excitement and to stand near the finish line and watch people's expressions and their emotions when they cross that finish line, it's just, it's, it's truly amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having been um, participated in, in runs before and also been a spectator, being a spectator is so fun. It is really, um, you know, it's, it's such a great way to participate in, in a race. Um, so I, I, you know, I love that you guys have pathways for everyone to participate in whatever way that they're comfortable, whether it be running the 25 K or cheering people on, on the sidelines. Um, you know, it's such a great, uh, community event and such a great feeling. Well, and the other thing is, and if people want to find out more, um, you know, they can go to AmwayRiverbankRun.com. Um, all the information is there. Um, you know, we I have charity partners, and obviously our charity partners um, are, you know, a lot of them are challenged right now because they don't have, you know, the same um, assets that they've always had. You know, we've got uh, the American Cancer Society, um, specifically donations for Hope Lodge, um, the Children's Advocacy Center of Kent County, Inductive Learning Center, Hand to Hand, which is a food bank for kids, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the Mental Health Foundation, Be Nice. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of talk about mental health right now with us all being cooped up and, you know, how do you deal with the stress and, and that kind of thing. It's just, you know, we're in, in challenging times now, so don't forget our charity partners, please. Awesome. Uh, Russ, is there anything else you'd like to say? Well, just thank you to you, Elise, and, and to Two Eagles for everything that you guys are doing to keep us uh, in a positive light thank as we you. look forward and, and getting, uh, getting through this coronavirus. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope everybody does practice uh, physical distancing and that uh, we all get through this together. Yes, and I look so forward to October 24th. I think it's going to be a great day. As I said before, I'm so glad that you guys – rescheduled it and it's something that we can look forward to when this is all over well thank you lisa i appreciate it yep all right thanks russ 
I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Russ. Um, and I hope that you, and I hope that if you haven't signed up yet, that you decide to participate in the Riverbank Run. Uh, as Russ and I said, how great would it be to have a historic turnout um, to celebrate our health and our wellness and this whole thing being over. To stay in touch with us, please visit www.womenslifestyle.com and sign up for our newsletter. You can also listen to this podcast on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is Women's Lifestyle, all one word. If you have any ideas for a podcast episode or if you'd like to hear from someone we haven't interviewed yet, please reach out to me at E-L-Y-S-E at womenslifestyle.com. That's Elise at womenslifestyle.com. I hope you are all staying healthy and staying safe, and thank you so much for listening.